when I was in the second grade, I believe, Russia sent Sputnik to the moon. So it scared the United States to death, to no end, because the Russians were out ahead of us scientifically. So at that point, the United States of America started tracking students. And that was my age group. And I got tracked from second grade, third grade, ba based on aptitude and all this, I guess, into a science curriculum. So I really, I really never knew anything other than going into science or math or medicine or something like that. When I graduated, finally, I said one day, why didn't I know something about broadcasting or marketing? I think I could have been an excellent talk show host, hostess. I love people. I love being around people. I would have probably been as good as Oprah. Who knows? But at any rate, um, I thought I wanted to go into medicine. But uh, Rachel Carson wrote her book, The Silent Spring in 1965, and I was in high school then, getting ready to graduate. And that book kind of struck me as to what was happening in our environment. The environment was just beginning to, everybody was beginning to pay attention to it at that point. Not now. We started paying attention to the environment a long time ago. And also in my household, being raised again, like I said, in the segregated South, the men who collected the garbage and trash were, you know, the garbage men, but because they were black, we were never allowed to call them garbage, garbage men in the house. So we decided as little girls and all, so our parents wouldn't get upset with us, we called them the sanitary engineers. So every Thursday night, get the trash out for the sanitary engineers and all. So one day when I was a senior in college, I was walking by the bulletin board in the admin building and saw this sign that said scholarships in sanitary engineering. And at that time, it wasn't environmental. It was sanitary. And I said, scholarships for master's degrees in sanitary engineering? They have to be kidding me. What is that? So I read and I said, oh my goodness, this is what I'm really interested in. It's the science, it's the math, and of course, it was the environment. So that thing of not calling them garbage men, but sanitary engineers, and Rachel Carson writing her book, that was sort of the impetus for me to say, this is really what I want to do. I really think the environment is where I'm comfortable, where I feel good. I think this is going to be my contribution. This is going to be my profession. So that's really the way I ended up, because when I graduated from college, I had no idea with a degree in chemistry I could do anything. But I knew I was not going to teach school, at least I thought that, because my parents were school teachers. So I was going to have to do something else. Went into environmental engineering, got my PhD, loved the environment. Then what did I do for the first six, seven years of my life? I go into university teaching. But then I went into practice. But it's always been, everything that I've done has been dedicated and focused on improving and enhancing the physical and human environment. I still have the company today, and we do compostable water, water, hazardous waste. We work all over the U.S. And about 1995, uh, we opened up uh, in South Africa at the request and invitation of President Nelson Mandela, and we've been working there since. And uh, we decided to pay more attention to the human environment rather than the physical environment in South Africa, and developed a specialty in the design, development, and implementation of sustainable means of governance. And well, of course, you know, most of us, especially Southerners, always have to start with uh, our parents. And most of those uh, of us from the South have to say our mothers who did not let us breathe uh, because they had intentions for us. And the whole thing was to make sure that uh, we got a decent education so that we could take care of ourselves, especially when you have, uh, you raise all girls. You want to make sure that your children, especially your girls, are in a position to always be able to take care of themselves. So I have to say, 
my parents with my mother and my environment because we were raised in a middle class educated environment. In college, uh, interestingly enough, my English professor, Dr. Juanita Williamson, uh, was uh, a very big influence in my life. Uh, she would not let me take a back seat or a back step, and she just kept pushing me along. And my chemistry professor, Dr. Uh, Beulah, who realized early on that I really should have maybe gone to uh, an engineering school or something like that. But at that point in Memphis, uh, there weren't, we were still working somewhat in a um, segregated environment. So he worked with me to make sure that I got all of the necessary coursework so I could do differently in graduate school. Then when I got to graduate school, I have to say for my master's program, all of my professors all of them, Dr. Reichman, Dr. Edgeley, Dr. Tomlinson, Dr. Buzzle, they were all absolutely fantastic. And I have to say that they were all mentors. And one of the reasons why I think I have the consulting firm today is because they had a consulting firm. And I was always watching them. And even though they were very good in the classroom, I was always watching what they were doing in their business. And I said, well, one day maybe I'll have a consulting firm or maybe I'll teach. Then uh, one of my classmates, Dr. Cecil Luhing, has been a lifelong mentor. Uh, Dr. Luhing uh, really came down to Lamoine College, interviewed me when I, when I applied to graduate school, and convinced me to come to Washington University. And he has tracked me all the way, the, some of the many wonderful things that have happened to me in life professionally still have occurred because of Dr. Luhing. We're still extremely good friends. Um, and then Dr. Leon Weinberger, who I met through Dr. Luhing, helped me start PEER and stayed with me for a very long time in the company as it was growing and developing. So I can say maybe those people were the strong mentors in my life that got me where I am professionally, but against my parents for getting me where I am professionally and socially. Perhaps the first challenge was obvious, um, being frequently the lone female and frequently the lone black uh, person in the classroom situation and in the work environment. That could prevent some problems, but um, we were raised to be extremely confident about ourselves and who we are and what we are. So those barriers for me were easy to overcome, especially when you're raised in a segregated environment as we were uh, growing up in Memphis. A lot of the barriers that some people might witness, we grew up early learning how to overcome some of those things. So barriers that maybe could have presented uh, a problem going to school did not. I, my undergraduate college was uh, completely black, so that was not a problem there. Graduate school, it was just, I think the larger barrier was the size, because I went to a small undergraduate school. But I, I found all along the way, uh, in working on both my master's and PhD uh, degrees, that I had very strong, supportive professors who really uh, were determined to see me succeed. I felt like that, at least. Um, so I had no problems there. I think um, maybe one of the first challenges was when I started teaching. And uh, for the first time, coming in contact with Asian male uh, coworkers uh, who, have a, who had, at that point in time, a different perspective of women. So trying to um, be accepted as a professor in the College of Engineering with Asian males did tend to be a challenge. Um, and then the bigger problem, of course, challenge is when you open a consulting firm. And I think those challenges there were just the whole challenge of being a small business. And small businesses are always undercapitalized, always having many problems. So the bigger challenge within the consulting business was winning the work, and keeping the work and make sure you can get the work done and then make sure that you can 
meet payroll. So it's sort of a little different uh, between those of us who go into academia and those of us who go into practice. And I was in practice, and it's the whole thing of being an entrepreneur and surviving. And I really have to say, I guess I didn't, whatever challenges, I overcame them, and I still have them every day. But we've been fortunate enough to be in business for 35 years. So I've been able to overcome a lot of those challenges. But it's like you always say, can I breathe? Can I exhale? I said, no, Lily, you're not today, maybe tomorrow. And I truly believe that man or humans and the environment can coexist. We can do it together, and we can benefit and enhance each other. And I believe that I have the responsibility to pass on a cleaner environment to the next generation, cleaner and better than what I received. And with my skill, training, and education, we know how to do that. And I'm going to do my part to see to it that it's done. I'm a mother. I have three grown children, all boys. And I have grandchildren, 